Hello, it's Sis Volk. This time no card making, but crafting with card making supplies. I got this metal stencil from Alina Craft Store and I would like to show you many ways to use it. It is a stencil like other stencils, but because of the metal, very strong and therefore suitable to use for wood burning. To start with, this metal stencil is perfect for transferring as a mask stencil. In this first example I traced the letters with a thin fine liner. By first drawing a line on the paper with a pencil, you can easily see whether you are going straight. You can then color the letters if you wish. I am coloring the letters here with water-based stamping ink, without tracing them over beforehand. Alina sells finger daubers that are very handy for this. As I don't have these, I use a makeup sponge. If you want to avoid accidentally drawing ink over the edge, you can first cover it with masking tape. And of course, you can also color the letters directly with paint, with structure paste or glitter paste for example. So many possibilities. Another technique is dry embossing. For this you need a B plate, a rubber mat with the piece of paper that you want to emboss on it. Then the metal stencil, on top of that a folded piece of A4 paper and finally another B plate. It may be that the sandwich you need to make is slightly different for your die cutting machine. Anyway, this way you use the stencil as an embossing template. The rubber mat gives structure to your paper. You could use this as a background for a card or a label for example. But you could also cut out these embossed letters and glue them on again to make a word. Even the thin letters are well embossed. Using Alina Crafts archival ink and the blending brush, you can also color the dry embossed letters. The color I am using here is Carmine. With rotating movements you can add a nice gradual color. This panel is almost ready to add to a card. This is my light plate. It is an LED plate that gives a very bright light so that you can see through the stencil and the paper. I'm now going to dry emboss the stencil by hand. I have already set up a guideline so that the text will be properly aligned on the card. For this technique you turn the stencil over and work on the back of the paper. This means that the right side of the paper is facing the stencil. Remember to work from right to left, otherwise the text will be reversed. Next, use a creasing tool to press the paper into the stencil and to crease the letter. Alina Craft sells these tools also. Only trace the outer edges with the creasing tool. This is the same pen that I use to crease and fold my cards in half. I always do this with the thicker side first and then again with the thin side, following only the edges. Finally, I trace the entire letter with the bolder side of the tool. Can you imagine that I used such metal stencils a long time ago to make my own wedding cards? I must have made 50 wedding announcements and also 50 tags with our initials and extra embellishments around them. Only there were no embossing machines back then. But I would do it again because it gives a beautiful effect and it's also very special that it is handmade. I should actually have done it with vellum. That is very beautiful because vellum turns white when you slightly emboss it. The vellum remains matte in color but the embossed letters turn white. The tin letters are also very easy to emboss in this way. If the tool is a little stiff on the paper Stroke it across your scalp, through your hair. This skin is greasy and makes the tool somewhat smoother to slide over the paper. <laughs> Funny tips of mine. 
Now I'm going to work with the wood burner. It is a lot of fun to do. I just won this one from a vet creative and so I don't have an, any experience with it yet. But I do know that it gets really hot and that you can use it in combination with these metal stencils from Alina Craft Store. To start with, I tried it out on a wooden disc. Of course, I first draw a pencil line, which I can erase later. I trace the letter with the burner. I suspect that my burner is not yet hot enough. It is quite easy. The metal stencil allows you to create sharp lines with beautiful letters. For this second try, I first trace the letters with a pencil and then burn them with the burner. This also works well, but I think this is because the burner is now simply warmer. I do have trouble staying straight, so I prefer to burn the letters using the metal stencil. Now I'm going to work on my project. I have a wooden jewelry box that I want to decorate with the wood burner. I want to burn the word beauty and I'm calculating a bit how much space that word will take up. It is six letters so it will be about one letter wider than the metal stencil. I trace the letters first just to be sure that they would fit nicely before I started burning them. I am a bit stubborn and try to do the first two letters without a stencil. Too bad, it looks a bit shaky. Next, I do the letter A with a metal stencil. This goes much better immediately. The letters are easy to burn with a very thin burner tip. The hardest part is holding the stencil still on the box. And in my case, burning it while the camera is above it. And I want to give you a good view of what I am doing. This part of the video is sped up six times. Wood burning is a slow and patient precision job. But I had so much fun doing this. Now that I have finished burning the letters, I want to decorate the box with a nice image. I don't want to overlap the text, so I cover it with a piece of purple tape, painter's tape. You might recognize this stamp. It is a beautiful image of a peacock. I've used it to make several cards and even bookmarks. In the description below this video, I will place the links to the video in which I use this peacock stamp to make a bookmark. I use light grey ink to make a print that I can trace over later with the wood burner. The lid is apparently hollow, but that is not a problem. I will fill in the middle. In the meantime, I wait until the wood burner has warmed up again and I use the thinnest tip. There are quite a few things that you can decorate with a wood burner. How about a coat rack with the names burned into the hooks? Or a nameplate for the door? Or a chopping board? A coaster? A door hanger? Keychain? Or a ladle? It's all possible. You can even burn on cork. You could make cork coasters with names or decorations. I do my best to draw the lines and as long as I rotate the box, this actually goes quite well. Because I'm speeding up the video, it seems like it's all going really fast, but in reality I'm doing it very slowly, so as not to slip and lose control. I'm trying to get a little bit more ink on the box, but it just doesn't quite work. Maybe I could have stamped it without a stamping block and directly from the plastic sheet where the stamp is kept. If you do that, you can also stamp on curved objects, because the tin plastic sheet bends with it of course. But it's not a problem that not all of the print has been transferred. 
I will fill it in, following my own idea. I place a few dots here and there and fill in the pattern the way I like it. I also stamp the side of the box. I take the stamp off the clear block for an easier print and I keep adding feathers until I am happy with the result. Maybe you have experience with wood burning and can see that I am doing something wrong. I would love to hear about it in the comments. For me it's just a matter of showing how you can use your card crafting tools for other creative purposes as well. I have disconnected the wood burner from the socket for a while and I'm now unscrewing the tip with pliers. I'm going to use another tip. No idea what it's called, but you know what I mean. With this I will burn some nice figures into the box. And with this other tip I will make a sort of stripes. For such a first time with a wood burner I am quite pleased with the result. I think it's just like making cards. The more often you do it, the better you get at it. So you see, I use the stencil to wood burn. To emboss by hand the old fashioned way with the scoring tool, on paper or possibly on vellum. Embossing with the die cutting machine and the rubber mat. And then ink blending. Ink blending can also be done without embossing, using a brush, makeup sponge or finger dauber. And a most well known technique, tracing with a fine liner. And I haven't even worked with glue and glitter paint or texture paste yet. Thank you for watching this video to the end. And thank you for your nice and sweet comments in all languages. En français, in Deutsch, in English, en espagnol, and in het Nederlands. Thank you so much. If you like my videos now, please subscribe to my channel Sisfolk and leave a comment here. And also press the bell button so you don't miss my new videos. It would be so nice to reach more people with my videos. All the products I used are included in the description below the video. When you click on any link, you will be redirected to Alina's webshop on AliExpress. I will then get a small commission on your purchases, while it costs you nothing extra. Enjoy your crafting! And I will see you next time. Bye bye.